brought to you first bill. So what we're trying to do is kind of bring innovation into the new world. So the cool thing about it is we're kind of taking it outside of GE. We've got a brand new company. We're opening a micro factory. Um, it's coming soon at the end of July. But uh, actually, we got to be in the facility for the first time yesterday without too many construction workers, and it's coming along beautifully. So we invite you to Louisville, Kentucky. That's where we're located. Just a little bit of a, a drive. So, you know, it's okay, but you can always create with us online. And that's kind of why we're here. So, um, we'll just dive right in. And today we're going to talk about innovation, so the traditional corporate model um, versus kind of more open source way of thinking about things, um, we're calling open innovation. Um, so Mary has previously worked on dishwashers. Uh, my name's Justin, I worked on refrigerators at GE. We're a part of the GE appliance process of bringing products to life. And are now working on first build, it's our, our new model of doing it. Are we good on time? Do we still have about 20 minutes or should yeah. we? Yeah, okay. so just until about 11.45. We can handle that. Um, I love this living room setting. It's very casual, which is exactly what we want. Um, so rather than us talking to you, we'd love for this to be kind of an open conversation. So if any questions come up, feel free to ask. Um, we're here to talk today a little bit about how you innovate. Um, so I'm going to give you a story about Bob. Um, and Bob is a traditional guy. We'll say he's a refrigeration development engineer. Go figure. Um, he sits in his cubicle. That's Bob's box. It's a cubicle. Um, around him are cubicles full of people who are designing other parts. Um, and Bob's kind of absorbed in his own world. Um, so he knows exactly what his parts are. He's really an expert around them. Um, but he's got limited inputs to see what's going on with the rest of the product um, and how to develop. Um, he's very passionate about what's he, what he's doing. He genuinely wants to make the best part he can for that refrigerator. Um, he's an expert on it. He's the one who knows that part better than anybody else in the world. Um, he's just not as in touch as we'd like with the community he's designing for. Um, and typically he gets a spec and he's designing that spec and the spec is based on an existing product and an incremental improvement. Um, we want to get Bob thinking more about trying new things, um, making, doing, um, and really innovating. So how do we open up that cubicle, um, make things a little more open, um, and give him more insights as to who he's designing for and what the other constraints are in the project? So that's where we started with a partnership, our first ever hackathon, and that was with our local hacker, hacker group, Level One. And um, in that, we, GE partnered with Level One, and we you know, had to make some cool graphics to go along with it. But um, So we had 10 teams and 28 hours. And this is how we're gonna define open. So everybody is together, there are no walls here. And we have GE people interspersed with um, level one people, interspersed with um, local students. This is all about bringing everyone together. We're looking for everybody in the community. It's not just um, the engineers, and it's not just the designers. If you have an idea, it's a valid idea, and we want you to participate. So in that, you can see, we kind of pulled together some of our favorite words in this kind of cool graphic. And you can see it's all about the different things. You know, it's everybody, everybody has a purpose. You want something. And um, we want entrepreneurs and we want fabricators and anybody who's enthusiastic about anything. And, and it seems a little bit of a stretch when you hear people uh, talking about being enthusiastic about appliances, but every single one of you probably used an appliance this morning. And you all had a thought about it. Like, hmm. Wouldn't it be cool if this wasn't in my way or this was a little bit easier to use? It's really not as far-fetched and that's why we think this is really cool and we think that we can really get the community and the whole world involved in this. So it's all about making ideas into products, into people's homes. Uh, rough slide. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, in general, so the openness, um, bring the skills together in the making. We want it to be more than just a philosophy of how we work. Um, we want it to be very open with the information as well. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the cool things that came out of this hackathon that we had with our local hacker space. Uh, this here is a sink dishwasher. Um, so if you're like me and my roommates, uh, putting things in the dishwasher seems like a really big effort. So we pile things up in the sink forever, and then once the sink finally fills up, it's a secondary step to load the dishwasher after we've pre-rinsed everything. Um, so we had a group that thought about what if your, di your sink becomes your dishwasher. If you've got the racks in there, all the spray arms that you need, um, you just pull a case over and as soon as your sink is full, you drop it down, press the start button and go. Um, so they actually built up this prototype in the, the 
the course of 28 hours um, from start to finish. The interesting thing, after they were done, we found that in 1948 there was an electric sink that GE made. A few different people had it. Um, it was almost a recurring idea that this was originally how the dishwasher was done. Um, and we're coming full circle back to it now when we look at how we implemented it in small spaces. Another really cool idea we had was the line cook. And this is, if, if you're a big fan of prepared foods in the oven, um, everything you buy probably has a barcode on it already. If you could have a barcode scanner, all you have to do is scan the barcode on your DiGiorno pizza and the oven could automatically set its temperature to whatever it wants to, um, the timer, and it'd be ready to go. Where this gets really cool is if you think about open sourcing it then, if you find a hack for that DiGiorno pizza, it works best when you bake it at 100 degrees, then 500 degrees, then lower it back down to 100 degrees. You could put that into a cloud and let people recommend and download your custom recipe or profile for it. Um, so rather than having to type in everything with your buttons, you just scan it, um, swipe what you want with your smartphone, it could save your favorites um, and pull it up whenever you want to. They built this prototype in the course of 28 hours. We've been talking about it at bigger companies for three years now and nothing's happened on it yet. So this is a really cool graphic. Um, I don't know if you can see, that's a Raspberry Pi cooked with a Raspberry Pi controlled oven, um, which we thought was pretty good and it was absolutely delicious. Um, so these are ways to cut the time it takes to do dishes to make life easier, um, enable healthier, simpler lives when it comes to um, cooking in your oven. Um, but some of the things that were able to come out of this 28 hour workout when you bring some great minds together and we opened up all the source code to our appliances and let people take a look at it and see how they can enable and uh, build on top of that. So more about first build. We have realized that not all of the great minds are at GE and many are outside, so why not bring all of those together in one community? And that's where we bring you First Build. So um, this is kind of our, our purpose statement here. Um, some of the big keys, we're inventing a community enthusiast. Share, try, and build. Those are the key words of what we want to do, and we hope that all of you and many more will join us and join this. This question. Yes. What's out of scope. I mean, this the scope is really huge. What you're saying is almost open-ended to every extent. Is there something that's out of scope? Because this is just too. It's too mostly wrong. about major appliances. Okay. So that's kind of where GE's specialty is, as far as the appliance world goes. Um, we are just kind of guessing that you may have ideas about aircraft engines or something like that, but. Probably it's a little less interactive. So that's where we're kind of making a little bit of an assumption. We're assuming that you're dealing with what's in your home and that's where appliances come in. So we're kind of gearing it towards that. But yeah, great question. Let's see. So one of the things is we are hoping for revolutionary ideas. Maybe there's the newest, most creative, energy efficient way of running your dishwasher or your fridge or your laundry. So we are looking for those as well, but we're looking for disruption. And the big thing here is when you look back to um, Henry Ford days, do you want to build, if you're, if you're looking at a spec based on existing, existing products, do you want to build a bigger horse carriage or a new color horse carriage, or do you want to build an automobile? Um, it all comes down to if you're just enhancing or doing an incremental improvement, you're not going to hit the disruptive innovation, which is where um, we really go and improve lives and make bigger leaps. Um, there's two big ways um, right now of open innovation. Um, there's kind of the crowdsourcing model, which I'm sure you're familiar with, and what we think we're going to move more toward as a country is co-creation. Um, the two are different, so I'll talk a little bit about the differences. Uh, you've probably seen crowdsourcing. These are the type of challenges that work really well for a simple problem. So if you're looking for a new flavor of a potato chip, it might make sense to issue a challenge where I'm going to define exactly what I want, I'm going to take entries from everyone, I'm going to cherry pick the entries that I like that I think are most feasible, maybe I'll give the crowd a voice in selecting the answer to that. Um, but ultimately it's kind of a one-sided volley where if we've got this idea, it's going back and forth over the net, um, and ultimately the, the host of the challenge or the open source nature um, ultimately gets to decide exactly what happens. What we see moving toward is co-creation. So we've got an online platform now where we want people to post ideas. We want to iterate those ideas with people, let them see what the design challenges are through the implementation, um, let them help build it and prototype it and show them all the trade-offs that are involved. And that way, ultimately, we're tying more people into the process. I think we've got great technical experts at any given company. I think uh, 
Matt mentioned earlier, I mean, the people who work for New York City are really smart, but the people who live in the city, if you can harness the brain power there um, and bring more people with different perspectives in, you're ultimately going to come up with more robust solutions. Um, and that's what co-creation really gives you the ability to do. So it is very global. So right now we have our website up. It is firstbuild.com. And when you go in, you can go to um, uh, co-create, which is a tab at the top of the screen. And it'll show you all of these ideas. We actually have it sorted to the most popular in this um, slide set slightly old because the votes on these are quite a bit higher at this point in time. But this is where you post your idea. And people have the ability to thumbs up or thumbs down. If you think the idea is great or if you're like, oh, this isn't really a good idea, good try. Um, but you can also comment on it. And the comments are really valuable for those with the ideas. Because how do you make something better if you don't know why? Maybe someone else has a different perspective. So we have a couple different things here. Um, this is the uh, line cook that we showed you in the pictures earlier. The votes, let's see, as of yesterday, were actually up to 66. And we've got several where we've got you know 85 comments streaming through where there's some really good ideas. There's a vacuum dryer. So instead of um, using a heater, to uh, evaporate out the water and kind of pull that out. The idea was, what if we used vacuum and just sucked all the water out of clothes in the dryer? Could it be more energy efficient? You know, would it not heat your home up? Because that's kind of awful in the summertime. Just personal preference. But um, it's really kind of a revolutionary idea. And how does that work? And that's actually gener generated 85 comments as of this morning. So people are going through and designing the iterations. You know, what would it take? How could we make this better? How can we make it feasible? We've shown that the concept is there. Um, it's just a matter of how to actually get that to a design phase. So a lot of really great ideas coming up. And you can post anything. People have posted, you know, I really want a blue refrigerator. It's fine. Everybody has their preference. Everybody has an idea. It's a valid idea. The idea is when we get a lot of traffic on it, we create a project with it. And um, we, when we create the project, we're building it. This is our micro factory. It's a rendering. And actually, I was just showing Lisa some pictures this morning. It's almost identical to the rendering as of uh, yesterday. Everything's planted. The plants are slightly different. But other than that, it's hard to tell the rendering from the real picture. Because it's, it's pretty awesome. So in this, we have our space. It's um, where we're going to sell and where we're going to demo and where we're going to actually make. So the cool part about this is any of you could come visit our micro factory. All we do is make sure that you're trained up on the equipment, how to use it, and you can build whatever your project is. Or if you're just not really the idea person, but you really like getting your hands dirty, you can completely come and build somebody else's project too. It doesn't have to be your own. So then we'll sell it and we'll determine, you know, is, is this a good idea? Is this something that everybody likes and they actually want it in their home? If that's true, then we'll build a few more, try that, and then it goes into GE as a massive <coughs> manufacturing overhaul. So that's the really cool thing about this. It is actually a physical space that you can come and do stuff. Where is it? Louisville, Louisville Kentucky. <coughs> what about one just in New York City? Okay. We're kind of looking at how we can expand to make it more convenient for everybody because we understand that not everybody can come to Louisville. But you know, if you want to use some vacation time, we're totally up for joining you. Last time I looked, Schenectady was very close to New York City. Yes. <laughs> yes. So um, we are looking for uh, diverse disciplines, and the idea is this: your idea is in the mind. And we want to take this completely to market, and we want to sell it. We want to make sure that it is something that everyone wants, because this is an opportunity to kind of take the risk out, where big business is very scared to take on a huge disruptive change, because what if it doesn't pay off? So that's where we have the opportunity as a small run to be able to make this happen, and we can test your idea, and your idea will be part of a mass um, innovative disruption. How do you intend to, I guess, compensate the inventors? I mean, would it be some kind of plan approach, or is that something? There, there is a royalty. So, um, if your idea makes it all the way to mass production, you do get a royalty of the units served with the feature sold. We've got a little bit on compensation. We'll get to too. Um, 
a couple slides away, we'll talk about some of the challenges, and then if your project or your idea becomes a product, how that'll work as well. We just comment a little bit about why Louisville is GE's other think tank. Appliance Park is headquartered okay. in Louisville, okay. so it makes it easy for us to kind of transition gotcha. um, from the small to the big. Gotcha. So yeah, okay. that's okay. We're working on how do we make it bigger. Yeah. It's a good place to start. Real estate values are a lot lower there. Yeah, sure. uh, to get the square footage, I think we've got 35,000 square feet. I don't yeah. think we can afford that in New York right now. No. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's really cool, especially with the hardware we work on. Having yeah. big physical things, it's a good place to start, but we definitely want to work on branching out. What kind of equipment do you have there? Well, we're starting, we're just getting our water jet installed. So we're starting there and um, we're looking at press brakes and CNC machines and lathes and, um, oh gosh, what? 3D printers, laser cutters, a lot of things that your traditional hacker space would have in a full wood shop and metal right. shop. Professor, so one of the things you might think of, I mean, New York City has like 100 universities. Yeah. And so you might think of, you know, positioning one of those in a university. It doesn't have to be in Manhattan. It could be in Queens for a real estate. Plan. Yeah, and actually, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but we've got a couple of guest judges on one of our challenges, so one of them is from Pratt, the big design school. Okay. Yeah. We're also leveraging, the University of Louisville is, is actually about a half a block away from us, <laughs> um, from the micro factory. Um, they've actually got the third, one of the top three rapid prototyping centers in the country as far as 3D printing, um, especially at metals, they're pretty strong. And they've actually got their own board fab clean room, so they're making their own boards and silicone wafers and chips there. Um, so it's it's not as well known, but we, we've got some partnerships and want to definitely leverage the strength of universities. I thought they only play football. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're good at football and basketball and basketball soccer. And too. So we're hoping that'll draw some attention to the micro factory being right down the street. Yeah. Um, we want to talk a little bit too. Mary mentioned how how much risk there is for a big company to um, go to mass production. Um, and a lot of it is we're coming up with an internal spec, um, we're developing it, and planning on making millions and millions of units once it launches. Um, so we're tooling up to make the millions of units, and it's a big gamble to make a big change. Um, are you willing to put that investment in the infrastructure, a new production line? Um, and that's why a lot of the changes that happen from bigger companies are incremental, smaller changes. It's less of a risk and it's easier to justify taking that risk. What we see moving to on the micro factory side, we'll take a look at the next one. Um, basically, we want to do smaller runs to start out. So build 10 units in the micro factory, give them to the hands of the people who really want them, who want to be able to use them, um, let them play around with it. And once you've got 10 units built, start selling them and see if there's a market there. Um, you'll get rapid customer feedback. And before we tool up, tool up to make the millions, we'll get a good idea of what people actually want. Um, and this drives a lot at lean methodology. You want to tool up and build a line that's dedicated to a million units, or can we make a flexible manufacturing line that can make any appliance um, that we want to? Um, kind of how you rethink the way manufacturing works. Um, so a little bit of how that's going to work for first build. Um, basically, we've got ideas. Um, we talked a little about any idea you've got, you can post up there. The goal is we'll evolve those ideas into projects. We've got a design we can execute, and then we'll start prototyping. Um, from the projects, we've got challenges we can host, um, which is why we're here today to talk a little bit about what we're doing with big apps and micro kitchens. Um, but that comes down to when we've got a, a design element that we're having trouble solving with the community, um, or even just a, a broad approach that we want to take and get many perspectives in, we'll host a challenge and offer some rewards. Um, from there, we want to prototype it and make a product. So the rewards. Your ideas um, will end up on the sales floor and that's all part of our co-creation. And so you have the opportunity of getting a royalty when it hits mass production, but in our challenges, you have a little bit more of an instant reward. So on the micro kitchen challenges, to be specific, there are four opportunities to win $2,500. Um, it's kind of a unique situation. We have four first places. Um, a little bit unusual, but we figure it's a kitchen. There are many different styles of kitchen. Everybody has a different taste, whether that's contemporary or kind of a classic or um, a shabby chic or whatever floats your boat. There might be four different styles. So four is the number here. <laughs> but one of the things that we realized is everyone is a hacker, whether they realize it or not. 
So one of our coworkers um, went out to visit his brother in Phoenix, and he um, kind of was talking about First Build and what we're about. And it turns out that his brother said, hey, I want to show you. And he's got his power supply, and, and uh, this is actually a butter conditioner. So in Phoenix, his butter, if he leaves it out, it melts. It's a little toasty out there. And so, but he wants it so that he can spread it at any moment. And um, so he actually heats it so that it's nice and perfect for him and all the time. And this was, he didn't even know his brother was into this. This it was kind of an eye-opening experience for him when he found this out. So yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of got their own little hack, whether they are a big hacker or a small hacker, it's all good and we'll take them all. Why would you do that? Just put like a little tank which has an outlet to the air and it'll mix the air it would be just fine. Well, so he didn't want it outside because it would just melt in no, the heat. Put that but there so it takes a little bit of air, a little bit of air, mix it up and control the temperature. Yeah, he wanted to um, keep it at a very particular temperature, so he just insulated it, and that was kind of his choice. Some background: he's an electrical engineer. He can run all the wires he wants, but to cut a hole in something and put a fan in. That is kind of just saying you got cold hot, mix it up, keep the temperature up. You don't need the heat. That's mm -hmm. right. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. <laughs> we can get several ways of doing it. Do I get $2,500 now? <laughs> <laughs> well, if that involves a micro kitchen, we're in there. Okay, so here's another look at um, a bunch of our ideas. And um, let's see. On to our micro kitchen challenge. So, this is actually why we're here today. And we are hoping that you guys would like to participate in it. The idea is we noticed that there is a big space constraint, especially in New York, but it happens that it's actually all over the world as well. And so the, the question is, how do you fit a full kitchen into a seven foot by 25 inch area? So 25 inch just being your usual countertop depth, depth um, unrestricted on the height, you can go up to your ceiling, that's fine. And it does have to be able to um, refrigerate your food of some sort, with freezing as well. You have to be able to clean and cook. So we're here today, we actually bought a bunch of foam core, exacto knives, tape, and this is more of your hands-on building. So I'm sorry if you're looking for just software, that's still available but you'll have to do it through the website because today we're here for the hands-on activities. So it's gonna be a lot of fun and we hope you'll join us and create some stuff and we hope that we can take pictures and post them up as your entry ideas into the challenge. You do have an opportunity to win $2,500. And we have another challenge also going on right now. This is an indoor grilling challenge. Um, for those who live in multi-person dwellings, Generally, the fire code prohibits you from using a grill, which is kind of a bummer because grilled food is pretty awesome. So we're looking at, you know, how do you get that same grilled taste, that flame char, how do you get that inside and deal with the exhaust and um, how it's going to fit into your kitchen? Is it going to fit nicely or is it going to be kind of obtrusive? So we'd like it to be a little bit flowing. Um, so this one, it actually has a three place winners. This one's not an all first place win. So the top winner is $2,500 and the second and third place also has um, monetary values assigned to it. And unfortunately I have forgotten them, I apologize, but they are on the website, firstfield.com. Big thing we want to look at is um, why makers. We want people who are willing to take on problems hands on, um, dive in, and help solve the issues that are facing the world. Um, I think it's easy to think about from an office and to think about we want somebody who's willing to dig in and start doing it and take the action. Um, so I think Big Apps is an area where obviously releasing the data sets and having people dive in and actually start solving the problems is something that's very appealing to us. So, how do we dive in and start dealing with the problems that face people every day with their appliances? Uh, we'll skip over this one. I think we're running close on time. Yeah. Um, I want to leave a little bit for everybody's questions. Here's um, a rendering of our lab space in the micro factory. So if you come visit us, you'll see the real deal instead of just the rendering. But in this area right here is kind of our lightweight workspace where we'll have 3D printers and you can kind of work on laptops, design 
The back area is our fabrication area, which you can also use, but you do need to get trained on it first. And this brings us outside of the cubicle. So we want to come out of the box, we hope you'll join us. Um, <laughs> definitely check us out at firstbuild.com. We've got social media channels open as well.